Hello everyone, this is ep- uh, episode 136 of Double Cross Anime. Uh, this week we're gonna do the uh, mid-season check-in for, for the four shows that we picked at the uh, summer uh, 2021 seasons. Uh, those four shows gonna be Kobayashi Shan, Chino Mad Dragon as the second season of that, um, Kageki Socho, Sunny Boy, uh, the uh, Zero Shu, Shunano Aquatope or uh, Aquatope on the white sand in English and uh, we cover the uh, next five episodes of Touch right so I'm Mario and I'm Whooper hello guys um, alright so what? where to start first Whooper <laughs> well it's an interesting question. You know, we have some we have some options. We were just talking a little bit about the music of Kageki <laughs> Shoujo before we started recording. We talked a little bit about Sunny Boy and uh, how strange and interesting it was, and how difficult to understand and parse it was at some points. Um, so I, I maybe one of those two, or maybe not. All right, you could pick. Let yeah, let's yeah, let's start with the uh, complaint first. Then uh, I think let's go with uh, Kageki's Kage Socho. Right. So this is episodes two through seven of the show. Yeah. And when we watched the first one, um, maybe a month or a month and a half ago, however long it was, maybe even two months at this point, when we watched the yep. first episode as part of our uh, first impressions of this season, you were a lot more jazzed about it than I was. Uh, I thought that it was yep. pretty, pretty like the first episode was kind of badly laid out um, and not very... In, like not very dramatic didn't have much of a hook uh mm-hmm. i pretty much feel the same way about it now honestly all right i just feel indifferent about Ke- kegi chocho as a whole i just feel that um uh them uh like all, all the characters are develop uh develop it it's so right to see them but it, it doesn't really leave me a lasting impact at all um, and I feel I just feel like some of the uh, more character focused episodes they uh, run a bit too fast. Remember, mm-hmm. like the, uh, the the girl where uh, she trying to lose weight. Yeah, we that was episode like, five. Uh, yeah, we have like um, at the end of episode four. That that was a cliffhanger where she uh, you know she was in the toilet. She is she tried to throw up. Mm-hmm. It it end on that note, and then at the episode five we can see a little bit of her problem her issues and and then it got resolved so like the the, the result of this on wave fell too quick for me hmm. so you would prefer it if the the series like was more upfront with all the issues that all the that all the girls are facing like their individual I, challenges and like run them out over the the course of the season yeah i i i i I, I want to see them, you know, like grow more. So um, def- definitely, I, I I think this is um, okay. But I I I just feel like the way they let out is a bit, you know, like it feel like the the, the entire uh, act was put onto like a single episode for 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 these girls. So it it doesn't feel that natural to me. Hmm. Yeah. I I mean I can I can definitely get behind you on the unnaturality uh, of the of the series. For me, that's not a consequence so much of episodes being dedicated to individual characters, though, because I'm okay with that sort of um, with that sort of writing. I mean, like it's it's TV, so it does air a week at a time, episode by episode. And if you're gonna if you're gonna do an, a good or an excellent job telling those sorts of stories, just like twenty minutes at a time. Then I'm on board with that, um, but I don't think the show is particularly well directed. Um, mm-hmm. I feel as though there are a lot of animation shortcuts, and a lot mm-hmm. of the times that like the tone of the series doesn't necessarily fit uh, with with the content that it's that it's putting on screen, especially because we do have a lot of uh, pretty sensitive topics here, like. Uh, yep. sexual assault and uh, what w- what would you call it bulimia that's the one where you throw up right where you you eat and then you make yourself yep. throw up yep. whereas anorexia is you just don't eat yep 
Um, so there's all that. And then this most recent episode, episode seven, there was the detour kind of into the, the past of Sasara's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And her as well. Right. Yeah. Their, their background as Kabuki performers. Um, I mean, each of, each of these stories and topics are you know, pretty, pretty interesting, uh, in isolation, I guess, or just in concept. If you Mm -hmm. were to tell me that there was going to be an an anime series that focused on each of these, these things individually, I would be like, hell yeah, you know, let's, I want to see what it's all about. But Mm -hmm. given what we've gotten uh, so far, I I don't feel like there's a very strong hand um, behind all of it, like Mm -hmm. you uniting it, you know? Yep. 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 I, I would feel the same. So, um, so you, you just sent me all, all of these, um, uh excerpt or uh of these uh how how the music was mishandled just before the podcast um i also feel that the uh the directing on on those scenes so uh w- was really was not really good as well yeah everything just uh, everything so, kind of looks flat you know yep 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 so like um so like you um a whooper just told me the uh the scene where um you know, like the uh, the stalker just uh decide to show his face to uh to one of the characters, the main character I. Yeah, with the blue hair um, girl, where he reveals himself. Yep, and then he just you know like just stand there to um to uh return her the back. Mm-hmm. And um, the the music there was so, so weird. I I will leave that to you to, uh to say that. Um, but I I feel like the um. Um, they they don't really know how to handle the tone on this one because uh, uh, it's not so, it it's about I I think it was supposed to be um scary because we don't know his motive yet he don't know who the who that person is yet, but the music, uh, sorry, but the uh, direction hanging out was, we we don't really know for sure what uh, what kind of tone they're trying to convey. Yeah, uh. The thing is, uncertainty uh, isn't the wrong way to go necessarily. Like, mm-hmm. as as the audience, we should be kind of unsure uh, what threat level we're dealing with here. Um, mm-hmm. So the the fact that the show doesn't like project a clear um, a a clear image of like whether this yep. guy is going to pose a problem or not is not wrong, but. Mm-hmm. The the show wasn't ambiguous. It was just um Hidden like it didn't go in any direction. It didn't stay centered uh in, in a place of uh like insecurity, nor did it clarify itself. It just kind of put the guy on screen and gave us a little little panning little panning shot of him looking looking all gross. Yep. Um yep. Agreed. and I is is cowering behind Sasada like Oh no! Please don't hurt me. While this music is playing in the background, like it's the kind of uh, woodwind piano music that you would, like you would assume that it would play over top of a scene where Detective Conan is uh, making a deduction in his in a, in a weekly anime. Like a little detective character in a child's cartoon is figuring out who the bad guy is. That's the kind of music they decided to put over that that scene. And I'm I, I guess I can understand why they did it. It's because, as you understand, as you learn in episode four, he's he's not a bad guy. Uh, but that's not something that we're supposed to understand or feel right away. So, uh, especially in the wake of what we saw in episode three, like Ai's backstory, her her mother's live-in boyfriend, uh, like grabbing her and kissing her I... and like trying to get in her locked room while he's babysitting her that's like some really disturbing stuff and to come out of that flashback and and then her fear of men which stems from this experience that she had in her childhood is now putting having this music put behind it uh i was like this is not it this is this is bad yeah this is indefensible yeah i I think the music it's it it had like no urgency at all because I I think um like that shot or uh, uh, or the shot where um, you know like she being uh, sexually harassed by uh, by the man 
they need to have a, an urge an urgency in order for us to you know like feel <clears throat> this is a, a threat we don't feel any of that at all it it, it just feels so laid back yeah it just it's, feels the music so, is almost playful which is really kind of messed yep. up like yeah i don't uh I'm not a big fan of the music in this series, but I—I I mean, I like—I like a lot well, of the ideas that it that it brings to the table. I just don't really like many many of the characters very much, or a lot of the production choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's where uh, I'm at with it. I um, do like uh, the vocal teacher, the guy who, in episode five, oh. which we were talking about a little bit earlier, with the bulimic yep. girl, um, Yamada, where he like, yep. you know, he kind of comes to her defense and. Um, when when she's locked herself in her room, he's like knocking on her door and trying to communicate with her and encourage her. And one one of the female teachers comes up to him and she's like, "You can't be here. This is the this is the women's dorm." And he's like, "I'm a beautiful woman on the inside." Yeah, well, <laughs> I was I, like, "Hell yeah, you go, man." <laughs> Or girl. All right. I actually, I actually feel uh, that scene. That scene, I I also really enjoy. Like one of, I think one of the highlights of of, of the of the show, not the whole show for me, but uh, I I feel that scene where he say that is a bit too, you know, like obvious. Well, I, I liked it. I don't I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wait. Yep. All right. I mean, regardless cool. of that little <laughs> that little kind of goofy line that they threw in there, I thought that his the way that he spoke to her in order to like, you know, in order to edify her and like reassure her was pretty, pretty effective. I thought that was scripted pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So at least there was a nice little resolution to Yamada's story, even if it, fe- it kind of feels bad that they just toss her a bone for one episode. And then afterwards that's over and done with. Um, you don't really yeah. get to yeah. check in with her progress uh, with that issue as the show goes on. I mean, we do still have six episodes left. This is supposed to be 13, but I, for, I mean, I, I feel like that episode wrapped up pretty well, but I mean, the same can't be said for a bunch of other episodes like episode four, which is the one where you find out that eyes stalker, her gross otaku. Yep. Sasada keeps mm-hmm. calling him uh, Mr. Gross otaku or Mr. Gross yeah. shut in. Um, yep. He's, he like saves her from a couple of, uh, uh, jerks who are harassing her with the power of Twitter because he predicts where she is and that she's going to be in, in yeah. danger and stuff like that whole thing was just, right. you know, it just makes you roll your eyes. <laughs> yep. I, I agree with that. Um, I, on, I, on, I actually feel that the, um, uh, the, the late episode, the episode seven, when they, um, when they are having a bit of flashback of uh, Shashara and um, and um, her boyfriend, I don't know if they if, if they, you know, like having uh, any romantic. Um, <laughs> it just uh, it feels decidedly non-romantic, even though they're labeled yeah. as um, you know boyfriend girlfriend yeah. whatever. Uh, yeah. Not that it matters particularly, um, but. Yeah, I I actually found that uh, episode to be uh, solid, um, but I agree with you that um, you know like they this this is a show that have like many inter- interesting elements in it, but just the way it uh, it try to uh, let out or uh, it uh, the way that they it it approach is uh, is lackluster for me. Yeah, it just ends up being a little bit boring. Yeah. Um, and it really shouldn't be because we're, you know, we need more scenes. We need more moments like the one with, uh, Yamada in episode five, like curled up in her bed, um, thinking about her big sister who always mm-hmm. used to be her, like her, her support and her kind of her lifeline. Um, and mm-hmm. she doesn't, her big sister's not with her anymore cause she's off at this fancy, um, art school and, she's like hurting without her, without her there. And you get yeah. to empathize with the character that way. There's just not a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. Just not a lot of it here. Nothing's really getting yeah, well, through I... my, my old grumpy anime fan <laughs> exterior. Yeah. Well, I actually glad that the show doesn't really go, you know, like um, over dramatic. I, I think they only have that in the, uh, in the flashback of, uh, of I, 
Um, but other than that, though, they they actually go. They sometimes they go a bit like like between the line between like dramatic and overly uh, dramatic. Um, so I'm okay with them right now. Um, I, I I just don't feel the character I at all. Like at, at first, see a uh, a person who had to deal with, and then at now see see act, act more of like a comic relief. A um, uh, put her whole uh, attraction to uh, to the main character, Sarasa. Uh, you're talking about I, the blue haired girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. I don't really think much of her, one way or another. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's kind of hard but, to because she like hardly makes a sound, even when it's yeah. her turn to talk. Well, she actually screaming a lot when um when there's a guy involved. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but now that uh, she's gotten past that issue, uh, I guess <laughs> now <laughs> there's uh, hardly any reason for her to raise her voice above, above a whisper. <laughs> yep. Alrighty. Yeah, but I don't have anything else to say about this show. I mean, I. All right, so let's move on to <laughs> the next one. Okay. All right. Um, let's let's go with uh, Kobayashi Shan. Sure. I don't have any notes on this one because I've been blogging it, so I hope I can remember things about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um. I I would say that um the following episode after the episode one, uh this is um better. So the e- episode one that uh show show me like a a, a problem a problematic um character with you know like a, a side of boost that feel really like unnatural. And, Did you just say problematic? It's if problematic, you know, like with the character <laughs> design, it is problematic. And yeah. uh, it, well, it, I mean, it, it, and the first episode of the second uh, second season actually uh, remind me remind me of like many elements why I don't I don't really into the show in the in the first place, like um, uh, Luluko and um, and and the trial relationship, for example. Did but, you just uh, say Luluko? You know, I, I Luluko is the trigger Luluko. show, Space Patrol Luluko. Sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, that lady with the big boof. Uh, You're gonna have to be more hair. specific. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a lot of big boof. Oh, uh, Lukoa. Lady. Yeah, Lukoa, Lukoa and Lukoa, uh, yeah. what's his face? The little the Shota. Little kid. Yeah, Shota. Yeah, Shota. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, that just uh, comes. That's just part of the show. It just comes with the territory. It's, it's yeah, just that's very right. weird. It, so, um. From episode two to uh, the current episode, it just you know like when we when we actually acknowledge that it just uh, you know part of the show and we get past that, it um it it's it's quite it's, it's quite enjoyable, like yeah. um when they when they show more of a relationship between the cast, uh, my favorite gonna be Toru and Elma because uh, on on one of the episode they uh. uh uh, they they basically tell you their back story of how they met each other and how they you know like understand each other too well that you know they fight. Yeah, this is episode five, and, the one where they're you see how they first met in like thousands of years ago in the Middle East. Yep, yeah, and this is one of my favorite episodes out of um, um out out of that whole second season. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. How do you feel about? Is it um, is it like on the same level with the first season? I have made up my mind not to compare the two uh, when it started right. airing because, um, mm-hmm. in the wake of the the Kyoani arson from a couple years yeah. ago, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. there have been some staff changes as a result of uh, of deaths, um, mm-hmm. and so I don't I don't really want to compare compare the two. I mean, I like the first season. I like this one. Uh, they're both very, you know, weird, uh, perverted. Um, <laughs> but at the <laughs> yep. same time, like even even when characters in this show are, uh, you know, sexualized, 
they there's still some strong character work that's being done with them. Um, for example, in episode two, the way that uh, Kobayashi gets through to Iruru, um, yep, is pretty interesting. Like they they bring Iruru's character around from uh, villainy to uh, relatability. You know, you can easily sympathize with her because she had her her childhood um, ripped away from her when her clan like her dragon clan was attacked by humans and as a result she learned to hate humans even though previously she had like they had been her her friends and her playmates mm. um i think that in that in that episode the second one which was the follow-up to uh the first one a lot of people left feeling kind of unsure about the show's direction after the premiere episode mm. two did a really nice job of kind of refocusing refocusing um the show's attention and yeah. using Irudu's character as a kind of leveraging the like the homelessness I guess that she was struggling with she felt like she really didn't have a place to belong mm-hmm. um this show is a lot about belonging I think I the, the first season yeah. for sure yeah. focused a lot about belonging and making a making a family um out of the the people who are close to you the people in your life and so it, it integrated Irudu's character into that that theme the pre-existing theme that the show is kind of uh kind of famous for i think so i I, like i saw as soon as i saw that second episode i was like reassured you know i felt i felt good about it yeah the animation is really good too man (laughs) yeah that that that's i agree with um i think uh i think this show is uh you can split that into like three main sections so like it's it's a comedy it's a uh, slap life and it's a um you know, like sometimes it's it's pre- it, it it's have heart as well. It's bring you know like some emotional resonance. So out of the three, I think the comedy doesn't work for me, but the other two are work very well. I I, I think the show's funny. I mean, uh, I don't laugh at absolutely right. everything that's that they put on screen, but um, right. it does make me all laugh. Right. Right, Often as a result we... of the the animation, <laughs> like the smear frames that yep. they use to indicate that a character's flustered or like retreating yep. from an uncomfortable I, situation really quickly like the the that animation um kind of accentuates what's funny about it or what's supposed to be funny about it so that even if it's something that's a little strange or foreign to you um you can still smile at it yeah well actually like i i think the animation does a lot uh to this like i remember like the uh the first the first episode where to rule see um uh, she working in the uh, in the maid cafe, and we see her, you know, like, um, uh, cooking, and the animation was there was just amazing, like how the way they e- illustrate her seriousness, her her commitment to to the job, and was, um, did you say that was episode one? I think it was episode one. Okay, yeah, because I don't I don't remember that. It's been a while. Right, you remember the scene that I said, right? I do. I I have like a vague recollection of it. Yes, right. And in the later episodes where the uh, the kids are playing, you know, the soccer, they are they are they're street soccer. Yeah, uh, that you was see crazy. like how, yeah, you see like how can I, uh see see move around. That was amazing. Yeah, that like was... literally running circles around everyone. Yep. So so the visual there actually like elevated every you know like the uh, the joke the uh, everything that make the show great so yeah that that was you know that I'm in awe watching it yeah it's not just animation either though like the the storyboarding the framing is is pretty yep. pretty yep. good too yep. like for example yep. in uh, in episode three the you were talking earlier about uh, Toru and Elma being like your favorite character pairing. I really enjoy Elma's mm-hmm. character as well uh, because she kind of represents uh, the side in like the human versus dragon conflict, I guess, or just that dichotomy. Elma kind of mm-hmm. represents the side that's um, very accepting of, of humanity's quirks mm-hmm. uh, and has mm-hmm. kind of integrated herself into that society without too much trouble. Like she sleeps uh, without she giving eats. it too much <laughs> thought. Yeah, and she definitely yeah. eats. Um <laughs> So in in episode three, where Toru and Elma are part of like the neighborhood patrol, and they're they're walking around trying to find um, mm-hmm. like a suspicious person, 
Uh, there's there's yeah. a shot where the the Elma is like reading the description from the from the neighborhood watch of of the suspicious person. It's like someone who wears glasses and a long black trench coat, and you've got Elma on one side of the frame, Toru on the other side, kind of looking looking over at her so she can read the paper. And there's a yep. space in the middle of the two of them, and then you just see Fafnir like walk into the frame between the two of them and start doing like really weird gyrations and dances <laughs> yeah. as they're both like yep. fixated on this paper, not seeing him behind them. That's just really yep. good visual comedy right there. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I remember that scene. <laughs> yeah, I, it's easy. I when you watch the show, it's easy to uh, like get um, specific moments or like even lines that characters will say or actions that they take locked into your head because they're um mm -hmm. you know they're portrayed on screen pretty distinctively yeah. now yeah. i i don't think that this you know like when you watch this show what you see is what you get pretty much like that they're mm -hmm. even if there is some some message mm -hmm. about um like uh, accepting people who are different from you or finding friendships with people who who you wouldn't expect to be your friend uh, and learning to love them anyway, stuff like that. It's there's, there's not much beyond those simple premises. Um, so there's, I don't know if there's much you can take away from the episodes beyond what they offer on their face, but well, nevertheless, um, yep. the way, you know, the way they go about delivering those little messages is, uh, is pretty, pretty heartwarming and uh, looks pretty good. Yep. Uh, yep. I another way to say that is that they always hit the right note. Yeah. So so yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Um. So the comedy for me doesn't work like especially the all of the gags. Um. Like whenever the uh, psycho are acting crazy. Um. You know like with whatever God can I say? Is, yeah. It just uh, I I roll my eyes all the times. Or uh, or or even show time with uh. Uh, with uh, Ukula, yeah. So, so this, yeah, it, they they just a bit hammer my uh my enjoyment a, a bit. But other than that, though, yeah, the the show is you know like when whenever I put on uh the episode to watch this, um, uh, I, I I just know that I I'm gonna have a good time watching this. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I don't think there's many better ways to put it than that. Uh, you just ha you do have a good time watching it. You enjoy the experience of watching it, and really, I mean, yep. you I you can't especially if you are kind of quote unquote in the business of watching seasonal anime. Like you make it uh, <laughs> like kind of a part of your life, and then mm -hmm. it uh, you can't say that about that many shows because like you know it starts to feel kind of uh, artificial and rigid. The fact that you're watching so many of them. Um, there's yeah, not yeah, many yeah. where you can put it put it on and kind of like sink into it and just watch it like a TV show. Um, I think you can with this series, even yeah. though a lot of effort has clearly been put into its construction. That's right. Um, I I think that is a, a really good um, introduction to our next shows. <laughs> okay, what's that? That's that's gonna be Aquatope. Okay. Would you say that this is a show that you can just kind of sink into? Oh, I see. No. I see what you did there. You're uh, talking about water. This, no, no, no. So this okay. is the, the the exact example of the show that you know, like we don't really enjoy watching it. I I, I mean, like it it doesn't mean that it's it bad. The I show, think it does. I think, I, I, I think the show <laughs> is like oh, overall is is solid. It just for me it just it just doesn't really leave me any impact at all. So I don't really care about the characters. I don't really care about the stories. Um there's a bit of um um there there's a there's a bit of um what they say the uh, the stake where where we know that uh in two months that uh the aquarium gonna close so they, they try their best, you know. Uh, trying to get more, uh, uh, so so get get more people coming in and get trying to get the uh, the aquarium open, but but it it just you know like uh, watching all uh, the last few episodes we don't really see the the stack, in fact effect them at all. Well, in episode six we see that Kukuru is reading a newspaper that says that Gamma Gamma Aquarium is going to close after forty eight years of business. Forty eight years, wow. Well. Yeah, I didn't even catch that yet. Right. So she she sees that, and that's what uh, motivates her to like 
come up with a new um, event or idea to attract business. And what they settle on really? is the shaved ice uh, with all the little decorations being put into the shaved ice, like little cookies or um, pieces of dried fruit, whatever, in order to make them look like different sea creatures, which I thought was just adorable. Um, that's what motivates that entire episode is the, the threat of, or just the, like the looming, the looming threat, I guess I would say of the aquarium's closure, but it's a little mm-hmm. vague. Uh, like the, if the newspaper is reporting that the aquarium is going to close, why is Kukuru going like jumping through so many hoops in order to make sure that it stays open if it's already a done deal. And if it's not a done deal, why was that reported in a newspaper? I just am not really sure of yeah. the status of the aquarium one way or another. And that's, o- that's okay because this is a two core series and like you ramp up the drama <laughs> a little bit later in the, in the show's run. Um, yeah. I'm just not sure how invested I'm supposed to be because I'm not very invested right yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's right. And and even talking about the the whole business side of things, like like you said, uh, I remember like in episode two or three, uh, there are some guys who um, who who want to buy the aquarium, or uh, I, I I don't know what what they do is. They were as a, uh, that was episode two. They were loan sharks, so they didn't want to buy the aquarium. Uh, they wanted to loan uh, Kukuru a bunch of money, um, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, probably yeah. charge a bunch of interest and. Uh, right you know yep that was mm. what they were they were loan sharks yep and that just right, reminded so me it... of this like the scenes in shirobako where there would be a confrontation between um the producers of one of the anime that they were making and the movies like what Is i mean the there was a scene like that series? in the movie yes but also in the yep. tv series there were scenes like that where the right. producers of the anime would like have to butt heads against the suits who were like the businessmen who only cared about the bottom line. Uh, it just mm-hmm. felt very, yep. very similar. Like business, right. businessmen uh, and any, anyone who has anything to do with money and makes money, their primary concern, those people are just evil and, and everyone else who does stuff for uh, passion. That, that's really good. Just a very kind of a black and white way of looking at things. Yeah. Um, you uh, you make a comparison uh, to me like uh, before the postcard that this is another show, another uh, working show in a working environment, uh, in in the same line with um, Hanashaku Iroha, uh, Shirobako. Uh, so I think Soccer Quest, Soccer Quest is the closest point of comparison. I think. Yeah, and and that actually interesting uh, to me because I, uh, I I didn't really make any connection with these shows. But I, I can I can see a little bit of, of that now. I just feel that uh, only three shows that I just mentioned um, are quite a way more superior than this one. Uh, I guess. I mean, I didn't even really like Hanasaku Iroha. I didn't get very far into it. I, w- I mean, I based on what I remember about it, I would say that it's pretty similar. I mean, maybe Hanasaku Iroha is the, is the closest analog to... Uh, Aquato, because isn't there a girl who like runs away from home or something and and starts working at the yeah. what is it uh, like a spa or a um a hot I, a hotel something a uh, a hot spring um a hot spring place yeah it's like a hot yeah it, but it's a hotel as well yeah. I think there are guests who stay there it's a hotel as well yeah that's a hot right, springs that's right. hotel. Yeah, As and I think I think she mother. runs away from home, or at the very least, she like leaves her hometown in order to take this job, which is yeah. pretty much what uh, Fuka is doing in in Aquatope. And of uh, course, there has to be an episode about like her mom coming into town. I think that was that episode five. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, she runs I think away for... <laughs> yeah. so their mom won't find her, and it's just a whole thing that I don't really care very much about. Yeah, I. I... All right, I think the uh, epi- uh the uh, structure now is split between you know like we have like one episodes of all these uh cast trying to come up with new ideas, uh new strategies to get more um uh to get more um, or to attract more cus- customers to come. Mm-hmm. So we we get uh that with uh, with them uh touch uh 
touch pool in episode four to pool yep and uh the um uh, uh shaved the, ice in episode yeah six. yeah that's right in episode six and then we we get more of like some of the indu- in individuals uh episodes where they focus more on maybe just the crawl of the characters or, or just them hanging out hanging um hanging out with each other so we get like the uh, episodes where uh uh, Fuka mums going to town, and um, we get the episodes where they just basically a pitch episodes. Yes, that was episode seven, and also the third one was uh, the veterinarian, who is pregnant. That ended up being sort of a sort of a character episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one as well. Yes, yes. So it was, it was interesting that she had a vision, like the same vision that Fuka had in in episode one. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. You know where she has like a magical out of body experience or whatever at the aquarium. The veterinarian has the same thing in episode three, and then in episode seven, the most recent one, um, the the man who's a regular at the aquarium who comes every year um, has right. has a vision alongside Kukuru about like their their loved ones who have passed on. I expect us to see more of that in the future. Yeah, and I'm this. I'm betting that that has something to do with the red-headed um, spirit with like the seashell yep. necklace or or whatever. Mm-hmm. We still we've seen that who, whoever that is that god or um, you know. Yeah, I what, think spirit is a good way to put it. Yeah, we've seen him in a whole bunch of different episodes. We and we we often see Fuka and Kukuru giving a little offering of like a fish head on a plate at a shrine, mm-hmm. a little roadside shrine, um, which I think is a shrine for this, this deity or spirit, whatever they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if there's any, if like, if you go back and watch some of the previous episodes, if there's any sort of correlation between the episodes where they make those offerings, uh, if yep. in those same episodes, characters have visions at the aquarium, I'm willing to bet there's a mm-hmm. connection. Even if there's not a one to one sync up between those events and those episodes, I think that the the aquarium there's some sort of spiritual mumbo jumbo going on there. Perhaps the aquarium was built on a plot of land where um like indigenous people lived. Yep. People who had like a closer connection to the earth and to the into the sea. Um yep. something along those lines. That's a really good theory there. I don't I don't really think that the show gonna go that way though. So if, I mean if, why if else would more, that red headed character be in it? Um I think it's more of like their quirk. It uh, I, I or, or maybe um it will be in the climax where like all the characters here can uh, be able to see her and you know like uh she gonna make like more magical moments for them to remind them that how that uh, the aquarium is, you know, a magical place. Right. So Yeah, I, I, eventually I think people will... I don't know if everyone's going to see her, but Kukuru and, and Fuka will, I'm sure. Yep. And, and we get like some uh, more love like the individuals focus on uh, on the side characters. So we see uh, one um, episode where where the, uh, the cooker, uh, uh, Shukimi, uh, take in charge. And just the later episode, we see uh, the uh, the blonde hair guy, um, Kuya. I, Kuya, yeah, um, uh, in the focus of of the show. Yeah, he I actually, guess. I mean, he, we mostly hear a story about like some mean girls spreading rumors about him, uh, and then him getting kicked out of school as a result. It's not as though we mm-hmm. see that happening, or or we hear it from his own mouth no. or anything like that. Um, I thought of, I thought that episode, the beach episode, was, was pretty like one of the weaker ones so far, especially mm-hmm. when it detoured into the whole plot with what? What's the blue haired guy's name? Uh, the blue haired guys. The blue haired guy. Oh, Kai. Kai. Okay. Well, Kai's yeah. little sister. The one with the one with the sister. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Kai's little sister, and then the the little. Uh, elementary school boy who has a crush <laughs> on his little sister and all it, it was just it felt completely irrelevant to everything else that had happened before um and i just didn't care man like yeah whatever. i i 
yeah, I can I can get behind that. So like this is the show where like every single episode, I don't feel that it's bad. I think that is still kind of the job. But uh, you know, I take it as a whole. It's just you know like completely harmless, toothless. It doesn't have any bite. Yeah, well, that, I uh, mean, I think a show being inoffensive to the point of blandness uh, or like mm, uh, yep. non memorability means it is bad. I, I would say that <laughs> yeah. I would say that that is bad. That's one of the worst forms of badness right. there is. If after you watch an episode, you're like, eh, all right, that's out of the way. Now I can go on with my day. That that's a bad feeling. I, I yep. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I I think um like. It just come to me that um I think like uh, in the future like uh fifteen twenty years from now on, when people watch anime um you know they may be more serious about the whole anime medium, and um you know they watch it back into like what what we um uh all the shows today, uh, in the present day, and um maybe this is uh there is gonna be a phase where you know like they re evaluate all these um uh, uh, PA work originals because um I I just by that I mean that they are not really that good but they may they might attract some of these uh, uh certain um uh demographic that you know like really into this kind of thing like melod melodrama thing that doesn't really uh you know then move um enjoy the beauty of like the it it episodes i think they might be like a uh, yeah a, a market where where this one gonna be you know um getting more and getting more and more attention in the i think future. that market already exists i think there's a group of people who really who already it. like think that this is like the peak of uh of anime really? yeah right. because they keep making these shows over and over <laughs> <laughs> so there must be yep. people watching them yeah right? well for now i i just think that the uh the producer or the um or the directors or or the um on the studio itself really into this kind of thing so they kind of make the same thing all over again you know and maybe there's a market there who really you know into it well, one of the reasons why a lot of these shows feel similar is because PA works uh, works with, and they accept funding from like tourism boards, oh, um, right. from different Japanese towns and stuff. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's why we have like this very specific town here, yeah. as as in Sakura Quest. Yeah, I mean those those shows are actually funded by in part, you know, not entirely, but they actually accept um, work from and money from those sorts of committees who are looking to promote, um, I don't know, aquariums or towns They're or shopping districts. Town. Yeah. Mm. It makes sense. It all makes sense now. There's a whole <laughs> big advertisement for, for this town. Right kind there. Of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why all the characters feel a little bit, you know, like <laughs> unmemorable about because they're not the focus. <laughs> well, it's possible for your show to be a, a gigantic ad and for the characters to also feel very vivid. For example, Tsuki ga Kire, um was oh my god I... was a gigantic ad for Line, the you know the SNS <laughs> app on Japan. I mean, I'm, it actually I'm, was. I'm it using was, it. It was funded uh, in part by by Line. Jesus, um, I actually using lie, so you know. Let let me tell you that. Um, yep, it's a lie. Is good. Um, <laughs> ad using it, man. <laughs> this, is, this is an ad. This podcast is sponsored by Line. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So it's it's possible for you know for you to be receiving money from a uh, I don't know a group. With yep. a vested interest in the show, yeah, like promoting their product or their their town, what have you, and the show can still be really good. I mean, I thought Suki Gakire was excellent, but this yep. this not yep. so much. Aquatope, yep. I'm just kind of like, eh. I don't really want to keep watching it, honestly. Yeah, well, and it's gonna be a two core, so um, I don't know how much they're gonna put out the uh, the materials. I, I already feel that it it uh like all this 
material have have been padding very thin lately, but you know, with the twenty four episode, they will will have more of the variation of how to serve the uh, aquariums. Right. Well, if you wanna if you wanna talk about a show that is not padded at all, uh, yeah. and in fact yeah. throws about fifty new ideas at you with every single episode. Yep. There's a for Let's that. With it. There's Sunny Boy. <laughs> yep, there's Sunny Boy, and this is the show where you know, like every single f- uh, episode where I finish it, I just feel that you know this is weird. The show is weird. <laughs> I still you know like get the handle of it at all. Yeah. And and that's a good feeling, you know, because you know, uh, we we have been watching anime for like how many years, and to the point where we can uh, really tell uh, how how the story goes, how the all how the characters are uh, gonna behave, even you know, like how um, the uh, the dynamic, the all all, all that sort of things. But Sunny Boy just you know like just be its all things. Yeah, for better or worse. It's for better or worse. For me, it's it's for all the betters. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm very very interested in in this show. I I watch episodes pretty much in, in unless I have you know like a commitment usually work. Uh, I watch the episodes as soon as I'm able, and I typically will watch them a second time, yeah. uh, just in an effort in in like trying to figure out what is going on. Um, yeah. The the now, I haven't I'm... had an opportunity to watch episode six again. I watched it just today, <laughs> shortly before we started recording. Yep. And I'd, it was, I could not comprehend what was happening. Like, they were in a weird black cube that was rotating through through space or something. Right, right, right. No, no, no. no. So, so before that, before that, they um, did realize that. I think the new world they 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 are staying is function through, um, it's it's like a, a cut. It, it's like a uh, a a camera rolling through the eyes of uh, the main uh, our main characters, uh, Nagara. When you say new world, so, do you mean the island or do you mean the new world that they travel to? Just him and Rajani. No, no, no. So the 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 islands the. Uh, yeah. That that new world, which like new rules, so the right. new rule is important. Um, so they I they realize that um, this is from the perspective of Nagara, and they realize that with him, you know, being an observer, they can be able to manipulate the uh, uh, the, the the screen itself, so that the event happened there. So yeah, I just um, didn't understand. I didn't understand <laughs> that. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so they just part of the rules. So I, I, I think that's now it still makes sense. And for some reason, they they found the, uh, uh, the others uh, negative prints where it's take them back to the, uh, to the original world. So like this is uh like few years bef- uh, ago. So I think they are all be able to go back to that world there, and Nozomi realized that uh, she had been dead. So I think that's a big, that's a really big spoiler, right there. So is she and, gonna uh, die? Like, with, no, no, within she the did, next six she episodes, did, she did die. Oh, I know. When they when they travel to their original world, which was maybe yep. their original world, or maybe not. Maybe it was just yep. some sort of projection. Uh huh. Um. She, do you think that in order to fulfill that that future or that alternate possibility that she will die in the present reality as well like in an upcoming episode I don't think she will die in um, in that world I actually like one of my theory is that um, one of the uh, one of the characters I I assume that it's gonna be the main guy Nagara uh, when he realized that Nozomi died he he changed the world so he's the one who, who put everyone to these, you know, like those real worlds, and for to avoid Nozomi from dying. You think that 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 happened in episode six, or that that will happen? I I believe that that uh, that the catalyst for everyone, you know, being uh, stranded uh, in the first place. 
So that's oh. the whole reason. So you think that yeah, the reason that... that he jumped was to avoid Nozomi's death? Yep, yep. That's what I. That's what was my theories now. But you know, like, uh, this is a show where I, I, I think for for a good couple of more episodes, so like uh, three or four episodes, we don't really see the answer for that. We will see like a variation of the new worlds and how they function, with like some very interesting visuals and ideas put on that. And I, I think, I, I, I would say that uh, for the only the last two episode they're gonna deal with the uh, the whole the whole thing the whole event. I'm not I'm I I'm not confident that I can make any sort of declarations about how this show is gonna unfold. I honestly <laughs> yeah, I expect to com- be completely confused even after it's over. I don't expect a tidy resolution to this yeah, to yeah. this story at all. Yeah, it's gonna I, be in fact, I can mm-hmm. the only thing I can guarantee you is that this is going to be a Wonder Egg priority situation. Not that I think the two Indeed. shows are particularly similar, <laughs> but I think that a bunch of people who have been watching this and hyping it up are going uh, to get to the end, which will not have a clean finish to it. And we'll be yeah. like, what? This show was stupid all along. It was just a dumb waste of time. And everyone who likes it is oh, a but... stupid idiot who just thinks that they're so special. That's what's, that's what's right. going to happen. <laughs> uh, and then Sonny Boy all will right. Let... you know, be, you know, get some Let... dirt kicked on top of it with a shallow shallow grave and a tombstone that says, here, here lies a show um, that everyone dismissed. By yeah. the time it was All right, let... even though it's so cool, like <laughs> episode two, the whole thing where you're not sure who's creating the blue fire and and what exactly the cause of the blue fire is, and Rajani and yeah. some of the other characters are trying to narrow down exactly what the rules are that like that govern this space, the island that they're on. Yep. Yeah. And there's all the questions surrounding Mizuho's character and her relationship with um, Pony. The student council yep. president, the girl with the ponytail. Uh, there's just so much. There's a lot of information coming at you. You kind of ha- you almost have to be taking notes or like watch it a second time and watch it like really uh, attentively and uh, intentionally in order to make yep. sense out of everything. It's just uh, it's it's cool, man. Like there's a there's a lot to get. There's a lot to glean as you're watching. Yeah. Um... You know, like it, it really a surprise for me. Like um, in the first episodes, uh, when well, when this when we get introduced to all the characters and and the worlds, I was thinking that uh, this show is you know like the next few episode gonna focus on either the you know like the uh, on the char- on the group that di- are uh, dynamic. So they're gonna be shot of like a lot of the flies, uh, kind of situations where it you know like the tension grows and they're gonna maybe kill each other or they're gonna you know like put more focus on you know like how um how they solve this world like what the mystery behind uh the world and it did none of that it just you know like episode to episode is uh have these characters going through the world and uh see the rules of each, each world and how to get out of that uh uh at the same time we see like on the uh, uh on the uh, uh, abilities that these characters have and uh, their you know like their uh, involvement their uh, their influence into the, the plot stories and some some other time I, I just uh, feel that you know it doesn't matter at all like uh, even if that if these characters have like a, a really specific quote it doesn't really matter in the end because you know like the next episode they they show another world and like these the new rules and you know like it, it's, it's starting from scratch again and yeah it just it's just the beauty of it you know like it's, it's some uh somewhat that uh is negate on the characters of uh, uh uh dynamic for me so like now i don't i just don't feel that hoshi the uh, uh the the president guy uh cap or ponies or they have any you know like effect towards the main story but you know that is it's cool it's it's still cool it's well still cool. hoshi definitely does because i think it's at the end of episode three we see him in like the the ruins of a temple 
on the island right. looking into like um, a window with a solar eclipse happening. Right, I don't recall that scene, but yeah, go on. Okay, uh, that's where he that's where he starts talking to himself about like a savior. Someone's gonna save everyone, uh, and he thinks that's mm. he thinks that's him. I suppose. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly you get reveals about the fact that some of these people uh, had powers before they came to the island and that Hoshi was one yeah. of them and that in fact he knew that they were going to start drifting but he still went to school anyway yeah. because I think he wanted yeah. to be put into a position where he was going to, to lead everyone yeah. um, I expect that there's going to be an episode kind of going into his backstory the same way there was for Mizuho uh, uh, at a at a certain point, we'll learn about what um, like what drives him, what what caused him to to come along actually, on this trip with everyone, even though he knew that everyone was going to be like whisked away to another world. Yep, yeah. um, he he did say that he he like the voice of God, the yes. voice of messengers. That's like another. Before. The whole question of who 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 or what God is in this series is re is really interesting to me. Yeah. Because there are yeah. sometimes we hear God's voice in place of another character's yeah. voice. Um, I think the first yeah. time we heard that was in episode two, where Rajani was giving some sort of presentation, and then uh, Hoshi stood up and said something, and midway through his sentence, he was cut off, and we heard God's voice finish his sentence. And the way that it was laid out, you weren't sure whether he he had actually spoken it aloud and that everyone understood him, yep. or if it was just Rajani who who heard that other voice, or if it mm. was no one at all. You, you're not quite sure. Yep. Like the show is purposefully obscuring that information, so we we now know that there are like two different voices for quote unquote God, one of whom mm. is also the voice of the dog that showed up in episode seven. <laughs> And the other one is the voice of the guy in the wheelchair who only Hoshi, Hoshi knows about. Yep. Um, um, and the, the wheelchair guy also makes several appearances throughout episode seven talking about how... Dude, I don't even remember what he was talking about. Say, he's uh, he's he on the, the side. He's on the side. That, oh, he's the principal? Yeah, he's the principal. Yeah, he's on the side that says that they can't go home again. Yep, um, yep. I would say that's the main ideological split between the characters at this point is some yep. some of them uh, have given up on the the idea that they can ever go home while some of them are still like desperately hunting for uh, a way back. Yeah. Uh and those those two camps I think are going to you know eventually end up in conflict with one another not necessarily all at war. Um but if we eventually get to a point where there's like a big showdown or, you know, some sort of fight uh, between the two camps, that's that'll be the line um, that separates them. Yeah, well, I I, I don't think that's this gonna be you know like the a big climax of of the show. I'm not really sure though. This this show is an oddities. And even like within the show, there are several oddities that we we can really make sense of. We don't know how to put that into the big pictures. Like um, Aki Sensei, I think uh, her 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 appearance is really weird because you know, like so far, it's only the students who got uh, adrift. I don't know why she's here and. And based on the uh, on on some other characters saying, see, actually her personality changes as well. Yeah. So well, the uh, dog says in episode seven that only the school and the students can go adrift. Yep. So yep. if if so, there's something suspicious about Aki Sensei having appeared at the end of episode four, I think it was after all the mm -hmm. monkey business. Yeah. Um, then there's also something suspicious about the principal being there. Yeah. He shouldn't. And he shouldn't be able to. Uh, be drifting with everyone else if what the dog says is accurate. No, no, yeah. I actually like the principal is not a drift. He's um. I I think like Hoshi um or someone pointed out in episode seven that he's the god. So like I, yeah. I think well, he's that, one of the two voices that Hoshi of version heard. of the god. Yeah, that Hoshi version of the god, and I don't think that he got a drift. I think he can uh he can you know like change pop back and forth between. Uh, that was and the real world. Weird stuff. Yeah, well, 
and and even the dog himself, like he's he's an oddity, odd, oddity as well. Yeah, because like, he's been adrift for five thousand years. He says. Uh, yep. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I can't make sense right. of any of this stuff. Like, <laughs> I just don't get what's going on. <laughs> Especially like the scenes yeah. where it was. So the the way like physically speaking or metaphysically speaking in terms of how the these students made it back to this reality where they found out that Nozomi was dead and they were able to see themselves graduating from school yeah um even if they couldn't interact with that reality like tangibly the way they got back there was yeah. they were all in some sort of weird black cube which was like rotating through a void before they made it back to that that time and when yeah. when nagara like rejected that reality they came back to the island and that black cube like crashed into the beach yeah. you remember this the scene where the black cube like crashes yeah. down on the island yeah i have no I just don't understand how that black cube was generated. <laughs> um, also, the scene where, like, all right, in all the right, middle on, of their on. their trip back to this the the reality that they thought was their original starting place, and like, there's a door in the black yep. cube that opens up, and like Mizuho looks out of it and sees Aki Sensei and some of her followers standing there, yep. like on the surface of the black yep. cube. I just don't, dude. Hold I don't on, so, get it. I, I, my brain is too small. All right, all right. Because I think they, 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 they in that episode they kind of mentioned that the uh, cube was kind of like the uh, the Noah Ark. So um, yeah, they had something to do with you know like them all gathering inside the cube, and then they're gonna be the uh, uh, a big um, a big tsunami coming, storm, whatever and get them into you know like uh go back to time so i i think the q is gonna uh represent the arc right because but, hoshi is talking but, about an arc all throughout yeah, episode yeah, yeah. six well he's but, he's uh, kind of positioned narratively as noah who's going to lead the students mm-hmm. like onto the arc in order to yeah. save them because he's the savior or he thinks of himself that way yep 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 um yeah but but like the, the rest the rest of the um of of, of what the queue doing and uh, all the student it just you know like uh it's just like a nightmare it's just like a dream i don't even really recall that <laughs> it's really man this is this i feel like you, you so cool. this is a tv show that you would show to like your film professor and be like can you help me yeah. break this down <laughs> shot by shot scene by scene uh, i know uh, you know, like uh, come from the perspective of you know, like the the person who who love films and love visual uh, storytelling. Let me tell you that the uh, the visual here is, uh, is really really refreshing. Like they uh they experience with many. Uh, you remember like the uh all, all the scene where you know like the screens uh, start to uh, shutters. That looks yeah. really cool. Like the way that um, they visually represent the characters' powers is to is to yep. mess with the environments themselves, not just show the powers being used in a and, specific part of the island, but to like make the screen uh, shatter, like your yep. like glass, yep. or to make it, especially in episode three, the um, where they have to they stumble upon like a a rift in the world that they can go through, like a curtain. Yep, um, yep, yep, yep. That one the, as well. The scene where yep. Mizuho and uh, Nagara like find the curtain and like pull it back and just kind of walk through the sky, like a that like just, a slice of the amazing. sky that they walk through. It reminds me of uh, the Golden Compass, which yep. is a fantasy and, novel where something similar happens. Or even Paprika. Is there something Remember? like that in Paprika, like where characters yep. travel between worlds by just like walking, th- like pulling yep. something, pulling the air back yeah, and it, walking it, through it? Yeah, in in Paprika, it's not the uh the curtain, but it's more of like the uh the class shattering, that that reveals the uh the other worlds in uh inside. Inside of a dream. Behind it, behind it, yep. So they just yeah. you know like kind of break it down that world to go to that that other world. So yeah, it's kind of the same concept. 
uh, in uh, the later episodes, there also the the scene where all these kids, uh, you know, are trying to meet the uh, uh, their versions of uh, graduations, and we see like uh, a scene where uh, you know the student lining up for graduation and and the kids, you know, like just you know, like it 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 just like two of the projection come together. And you're talking about the scene where that big long line of kids, like with without mm. the without the outlines around them, kind of just their shapes. You yeah. know what I'm talking yeah. about? How when this when the show <laughs> views characters from like a, a long shot, uh, yeah. oftentimes yeah. the line work around their body won't be there. And you see that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. superimposed on top of or like blended with the mm -hmm. the shot of their past selves or their alternate selves. Right. Yes. I didn't understand the meaning of that shot at all. I, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> it just um it just like I, I think the meaning of that shot is just they are in still in two different worlds and they don't match very well to each other. And it just you know like it, it serves the purpose. It's so cool. I guess. <laughs> I that one I that one didn't really speak to me personally. I didn't not just because I didn't understand the reason for its existence, but because the show kind of held on it for a long time. Um mm -hmm. and I kind of, I guess, I don't know, the fact, the fact that it, uh, that it focused on just that still for a long period of time, coupled with the fact that I didn't feel like yep. I totally understood the reason for its existence, I was like, eh, show me something else. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I, uh, I'd say the the experience of watching this show puts me most in mind of of watching Serial Experiments Lane. Right. Uh, right, where I where everything is kind of presented to you almost like a puzzle, um, mm -hmm. and you have to try to put it together. I kind of get, but Lane is very slow and meditative, whereas Sunny Boy, like there are a lot of, uh, there are way more scenes. Let's say, like the script for an average episode of Sunny Boy would be much longer than the script for an episode of of Lane, because it's much faster. Yeah. There are more quick cuts. There's more dialogue that happens in a shorter amount of time, but both shows are like mysteries basically yeah. you have to try to interpret it as best you can i think i i i think one element that uh difference uh said between len and sunny boys is that uh len they uh focus more on so they they have like a whole focus on the on the side effect on this uh how how like the cell um really like heighten the mood and how 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 does i how how does i uh, you know like really like put us into you know like this or uh, the groove of it all i don't think uh i have that of uh, that feeling in, in sunny boy well there's but hardly like, any there's hardly any sound effects in sunny boy there's hardly any music in sunny boy uh when the music does kick in it's usually like once per episode at a, at a climactic yep. moment which I really like, mm -hmm. like some of the some of the music yeah. that's played at uh, the insert songs. I guess you could say, um, mm -hmm. have been really like the one in episode three, which is uh, playing while Nagara is using Rajani's inventions in order to fold up the black curtain and like blow it away with a fan. The music that's yep. playing as that's happening is like a jazz fusion song. It's like do 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 do. It's it's just so like it's so syncopated and groovy. I was uh I was really into it. Yeah, I I love I really like the music in this series. Although I don't know if you can say it has a great soundtrack because it's so minimal. Like there, it's music hardly ever kicks in. I I think minimal is like a good way to um. Um, to say about this series, I think the the visual and the character design they have a kind of like minimal approach to that as well. I mean, they're certainly not over designed, but I would hesitate to call them minimal because they are so distinctive. At least in yeah, yeah, in yeah. in relation to the way a lot of other anime looks. Um, yep, like yep, all the characters have you. realistic hair colors, proportions. Uh, their outfits are all very similar because they're all wearing their school outfits um you would figure that they would all be wearing different clothes by now because mizuho has the niyamazan ability yep. she can buy whatever she wants so you would figure she would be buying lots of different clothes and getting more yep. of this this cryptocurrency that they're using on the island what is it called um 
Hyoryu I coin, know. the the system that Rajani <laughs> comes up with. You would figure she'd be yep. making bank by selling clothes at like extreme nope. premium prices. But they didn't do that, I guess. I don't know. It's easier to just draw the same outfit every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if there is uh, one criticism I have for the show so far, I think they rely too much on uh, Nagara being like a special boy with special ability. So he's the one who's going to be, you know, like the one who uh, who going to be, you know, uh, the Uh, the one who um, can get all the student back home or not so like everything everything are uh, relying on him now which I don't really like I But, mean uh, what would what would the show do with itself if it didn't have a central character around yeah. which things revolved like it would be even more impossible to figure out what's going on than it is now but um But because of that, because of uh, how important Naga, uh, Nagara is in uh, in this world, in, in in the new world, I actually think that he's he's the one who you know, who is the cause of the uh, of putting everyone adrift. So that's li uh, linked back to my theory before. I think Rajani has come to that conclusion as well. That the reason they mm. drifted in the first place was because of Nagara. Yeah. And yeah. Although I'm not sure about that, I kind of view Nagara as um, Shinji from Evangelion. Oh my god, I just watched the, <laughs> I just watched the third movie of Shinji's and um, and you know like half of the uh, um, the fourth movies and he just a whole new level of of stubbornness of you know <laughs> like of of punchable. I, I like to punch him so badly. I don't see. I I don't have that reaction when I watch Evangelion, and a lot of a lot of the criticism that I see of the show is of Nagara as the central character, and I don't feel that way at all. Like I feel like he's very much in the same vein as uh, as a Shinji sort of character, where he has a lot of responsibility kind of thrust onto him, and he yep. rejects it and just wants to run away from it. In fact, in Evangelion, Shinji is like that's a that's the big theme of this show. I think is like not running away from from. Uh, You know what it, whatever it is, your destiny, your duty, uh, what yep. the work that's been entrusted to you, uh, and in Sunny Boy, it's it's even clearer that that's the theme because he quite literally escapes into different dimensions when he yep. Nagara does when he feels as though there's too much pressure on him. He'll run away yep. and teleport away to another place, and he doesn't have control over it, uh, which I think kind of represents yep. the yep. the lack of control that he feels in his own life. Like we see. Mm -hmm. In various episodes, uh, we see his meeting with a guidance counselor, where his mother has not signed off on his career, um, yep. his career yep, form. Yep. And in episode seven, I forget, or episode six, rather the most recent one, I forget the context, but we the see more recent one. we see a shot of him uh, in the hallway of his apartment, about to go out of the door, which I think was shortly yep. before they drifted back to their original world in an alternate version where they couldn't interact with themselves. Yep, yep, you yep. see him in the hallway scene. of his apartment and there's like garbage bags um, just lining the walls and the floor mm -hmm. uh, like his like his mom is uh, just completely given up on any sort of responsibility for Freezing like rearing him. her child or going outside or anything um, yep. so he he like Shinji probably feels as though he is completely unequipped to have any sort of responsibility in, in his life or in society at large because they had just one parent and that parent didn't uh, care for them or love them or even interact with them really at all. Yep. So I, I see a huge, I would be shocked if uh, Shingo Natsume, the director of this series didn't model Nagara after Shinji. <sighs> all right. That doesn't make him a, a really interesting character for me. I I love that sort of character because I mean I <laughs> okay. the first time I ever watched Damon Gelly and I felt like I was watching like Shinji was embodied so many qualities that I that I see in myself as well. Yep. All righty. All right. I think we can talk. Uh, we can talk about Shinji Boy for for whole days, but because the time is limited, so I think it's. Uh, it's better to move on to touch. Sure, episode six through ten. 
we are now 10 yeah. percent of the way through this this massive series <laughs> uh there are very little baseball to begin with we have like one match yeah the uh, the baseball in match the... in these episodes comes in uh, number eight i think yep uh, yeah. And it ends with a show. It's not. A, it's not a high school baseball match or a junior high baseball match. It's uh, between two like. Uh, what would you say? What's the uh, word that I'm local, looking for? Casual, like lo- two casual teams that are associated yep. with businesses, I guess. Yep, yep, yep. And it ends with a showdown between Tatsuya and Kazuya, and he hits a home run like by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's was really cool. And we get introduced to uh, some more characters. I I think with my uh, experience with uh, Touch Now is that I get used to the uh, 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 used to the music, used to the uh, the aesthetic of it. So now I don't mind it anymore. So I think the music work a bit better now, or I just get used to the uh, uh, the sound of it. Uh, it become. I think it's become more enjoyable for me now. Well, the music, I think, even... I can't really put myself back in time like 35 years or 36 years, so I can't say yeah. with any certainty, but the music is certainly nostalgic, I think. <laughs> yep. Like, there are there are songs in Touch that remind me not of, like, 1980s um, pop culture, but, like, more, more like the 60s. Yep, yep, um, yep. I, I still feel the uh the the same thing that I told you uh last two weeks. So I I still feel the uh, resemblance in music of this one and uh aim for the ace. It's basically like one uh, uh one particular uh score that you know like they they do that every, every like twice or, or or three times in in one episode and every time that that score kick in, it remind me back to. And for the A's. Is it an insert song with lyrics? No, no, it's not. It's not that one. It's not that one. Is it uh, strings like violins? It. I. I. I will show you later on. Okay. I might be able to call it to mind, uh, if you could describe it. But it, as we were I, talking about earlier with Kakiki Shoujo, it's it's difficult to, um, talk about music, music. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of my favorite quotes about uh, music is writing about music is like dancing about architecture. Like there's no relation between writing or speaking and and music. Like it's it's a completely different language. Yeah. Um, so it's it's hard to talk about it. It's hard to write about it. But I will show you. I I, I will show you later on after the yeah. discuss. And um, so yeah, there was yeah. only the one baseball match, and that was in episode eight. Um, Apart from that, it was it was uh, just. All right, I gonna ask you first how you feel about these five episodes. I thought they were good. I enjoyed right. them. So uh, I like so I like some it, of the the continuity between them. Um, even though there wasn't much baseball, and it was more about I guess relationships or comedy. Um, yeah. I like the fact that there were a couple couple little through lines between them. For example, the binoculars that uh, yeah. Tachan. <laughs> drops from the school roof in episode six and they shatter on the ground yeah uh, and so for the next few episodes his his friend with the glasses keeps reminding him there are thirty six thousand yen and yeah. that his need to get that money in order to pay back his friend is kind of what drives his participation in the next few episodes especially episode eight which is that baseball match uh and also gives it, he gets a part-time job in that episode too yeah. and you can see he's not very he's not a very customer service uh, oriented person <laughs> no not at all <laughs> and uh yeah we yeah we we get introduced to some more characters and just among them Harada. i think he's he's really cute C- cool sorry cool not cute. <laughs> you think harada is cute <laughs> <laughs> and, he's he's uh, a little bit he's a little bit cute in his own way like how flustered <laughs> he is when he gets the love letter in episode was that episode 10 <laughs> Or nine? No, night. I think nine yeah. or eight. Yep. <laughs> well, the two hard episodes were nine and, and ten. Yep, night. Uh, and then episode nine was weird. It was kind of like a comedy of errors, yeah. um, where you think that he's lying about everything, but actually he's telling the truth. Yep. 
Like he really did have his appendix removed, as you learn at the end of the yep. episode when you see he's bleeding after he beats up all those yep. those goons. You the whole time you think he's lying because he lies about uh, befriending the the lonely baker's son. Yep. yep I think yep. what he did in reality was like pressure him into getting him all those those meat buns. Yeah. Um, but he really did uh, tear the stitches after his appendix surgery. He really did save that girl with the glasses from uh, a bunch of punks, even though the love letter was not from her. Um, yeah. Like a, uh, yeah. it was kind of like a farce. I imagine that there are a lot of episodes of like eighties rom coms that ha- kind of have similar structures to them. Yeah. But I, I just I, I just love the way that uh, you know like it was structured around his characters and uh, like, like you said even like around the uh, the thirty six uh, thousand yen, so I I think the um, the the writing here is is very good like it's been playful and it's you know like call back to uh, to all these um, events that happened before so it it's just a nice nice touch. I see what you did there. A nice touch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And, the, uh, the the continuity helps. The uh, the callbacks help. Uh, in addition to the thirty six thousand yen from from the binoculars, which like kicks off the dream sequence in episode seven. Yep. Where uh, Tatsuya has like the there's the st- the Japanese story of the red ogre and the blue ogre. Um, yep, in that yep, dream, yep. like his his friend with the glasses is the red ogre, and Harada is the blue the blue ogre, and they're both like massive and chasing him and stuff. Um, there's that, but there's also, um, the movie, like the date that, um, Kazuya has with Kaori, the, the yeah. brunette gymnast girl, uh, they the see him chicken a, curry as well. The chicken curry. Yes. Yes. Um, they go out to eat and they have that. And so when Minami prepares it for him, he eats it anyway. Cause he, the girl he yeah. likes is obviously Minami. Um, yeah. And he also sees a movie with Kaori. Uh, in episode mm-hmm. six, I think. Um, yep. But then Minami wants to see the same movie with Kazuya in episode seven. And it it doesn't come out until later yeah. that, like, he's, I don't know. He already he, watched it. Yeah, he's already seen it. He's doing all the things with Kaori that he would want to save for Minami. Yep. So, um, I, I think with the, um, I... All right. First, I I am not hundred percent sure that you know like the uh, the subplot about uh about Tachan, uh Tatsuya and Minami, you know like taking uh, a uh, a picture for the weddings, like 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 become a models for right. uh for that um really um sufficient for like an entire episode. Well, it so, it only lasts for half the episode, really. The All second right. half of the episode, they go back to the cafe and they're they're kind of talking about it, and that's when Kachan comes back from his date with Kaori. I, I think yeah. that's when the chicken curry happens. The second half yeah, of yeah, episode yeah. seven. That's right. But uh, my my point is that uh, by by episode ten, we I, I think we're getting more of like the main characters. Like I, I think the uh, the the whole team that. Um, they're gonna be shipping in, you know, like I think for the rest of the seasons. So uh, what, do, um, what do you mean? I I mean like we can we can sort of see like only side characters that gonna be you know like um uh, that gonna be a uh, a first members for uh f- uh for the entire season of or whenever you know like uh uh touch act gonna come in in the future. Oh, to the baseball team, you mean? The baseball team, the baseball team, yes. Yeah. Well, Kotaro, Kazuya's friend, the the big catcher. Yep. yep he's yep. an important character. Um, then there's the captain of the baseball team, the guy with the glasses. That's right. Who we met in episode two, um, yep. who has the the really hot girlfriend with who was wearing the, the swimsuit that Tachan notices. Yep. Um, she's like the manager of the baseball team, I guess. And there's going to be Harada as well. Yes, who are gonna join in? So yeah, they I, I think it's shipping up now. Uh, like, yeah, well, episode ten is the one where they graduate from junior high and they move up to high school. That's right. So that's that is the big um, okay time to get get the show on the road sort of episode. Yeah, that's right. 
And, but I don't um, know. I mean, we're only ten episodes into a one hundred and one episode series. I don't, I don't know for sure that that's we're gonna right. jump right into baseball right away. You know? No, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think it's gonna take a while. So we all know uh, what the big moment gonna be, but I don't know the exact uh, time that it's gonna happen. But I gonna take a while, guess that um, it's gonna take a while. So I think. Um, I think uh, Kazuya gonna uh, gonna play for one season, and they uh, he he can he, he have to face uh, the uh, the the ice pitcher from the other school first before right the older he, brother of the girl with him. the glasses who likes Harada yeah before anything happen to him <laughs> yeah that's right yep I guess that makes sense yeah that would yes, create a uh, rivalry between the two of them. Um, that may not uh as if if a uh, i mean i don't i don't want to spoil anything <laughs> all right yep 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 but, but that, that, that that rivalry that might not be you know in the moment that rivalry might not come to a satisfying conclusion perhaps yeah. I, i i i would say so i i would say that it it will not be satisfied like you know like we can we will see that tasuya is they they have they have to be sorry they have to be something a miss that uh that's you have gonna fill in fill fill in the role so you know that i i think it's it for the story purpose that uh you know like their um uh their challenge gonna be you know like unfulfilled in 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 some sort of way yeah well the baseball season has not even started yet so there'll be plenty yeah, of plenty true. of time before I I would assume that they wouldn't uh, Kazuya as a pitcher wouldn't face off against that guy uh, for a while, like not until mm. the end of their season or close to the end of their season. Mm. Yeah, so but there's... but he's in year twelve, I think already. So yeah, that's gonna happen so <laughs> sooner or later, like like well, this season, this year. Yeah, yeah, like this school year, the the one, the one that's just started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That could still be far off though. Yeah, not far true. off like all the way down the 100 episode stretch but far off like we haven't even started the baseball season yet got to get through a bulk of it yeah. first yeah true so yeah it's still it's still really enjoyable for me to watch oh my god yeah it's I fun it, it added cheese so you know like everything put the random episodes and it's gonna be enjoyable anyway you know i like that uh I like the dynamic between the brothers. Yeah, uh, I like that it's it's obvious that the two of them um, are on good terms and care about each yep. other, even though yep. like their, you know their their personalities are very different and there's a competitiveness between them over. Uh, it, I mean, it's I don't think it's really on the surface yet, but I think the two of them are probably in competition with one another for like Minami's yeah, yeah, yeah. feelings. Um. And despite that, even though Tatsuya is kind of like the main character of the story, the the show will still poke fun at him all the time. Like mm -hmm. the episode eight, the one with the baseball match, where um, ev the two guys who have come to the cafe to tell Minami's dad, like, oh, we're one player short. Uh, mm -hmm. When, when it's suggested that um, Tatsuya be the last man, like the ninth person on their team, they just laugh. Yep. They no, they no. they're talking to themselves and they say, "Oh, we we just need another player. We won't take looks or intelligent into account. We just need somebody, anybody." <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. No, no, they actually did, didn't laugh. Like I, I mean like when they see them, they actually uh, took them in. I think the scene that you remember is the one where uh Tatsuya going to replace uh Kazuya as the model for Ah, uh, yes. Uh, for taking pictures of, like all the all their parents. <laughs> Right. actually did that didn't uh, have that in mind you yeah know? there's there are there's several long scenes like yep. going from character to character being like who could possibly fill in for kazuya i don't i can't think of a single person let let me do it let me the father do it oh yeah the yeah. dad is so funny <laughs> oh, no. yes and he uh, keeps the another thing that's like they're kind of piling on to touch on like 
everyone mocking him and like him experiencing misfortune. He keeps getting money. Like he gets money for the modeling gig yeah, that he yeah, does. Yeah. But then Minami takes half of it and then takes all of his money because <laughs> she bought a record for him, an LP earlier. And then yep. he he gets yep. the thirty six thousand yen for hitting the home run off of off of Kazuya. But then he breaks a mirror, like a rear a side view mirror, of a guy yep. who's like talking about his beloved Jaguar sedan. <laughs> he that he happened to be driving by, and the the home run ball hit the and broke the mirror. Yeah. So he has to pay even more money to fix it than he just earned. He, yep. <laughs> he just can't but, uh, catch a break. Yeah, but but he actually get that um, uh, binoculars later on by his friend. <laughs> so, oh, I don't remember, remember that. This. When does he get the binoculars? Uh, he get the binoculars from um, from the uh, um, from Harada. Oh, he 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 just handed him the uh, the new one. Remember, like no, uh, I actually Har- don't remember that. Yeah, Har- Harada went into the uh, went into the coffees and gave him that binoculars, and then. Uh, that girls who have a cross on him can come and give okay. him the, um, the the hat, I think. Right. That w- I think that was in episode 10, wasn't it? That was after... Episode 9 was the uh, one that was mostly comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 9, nine or 10, 10, I think. I definitely remember the hat. The hat I remember for sure because he doesn't want to accept it and then uh, yeah. Minami slaps him for it. Yep, yep. You have to accept it. Someone's feelings are... Are packaged wow. together with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of course, she's very sensitive to scary. What the? Yeah, she's very sensitive <laughs> to what the the little glasses girl might be uh, might be feeling for Harada because she she is like kind of caught between two guys. So she yeah she knows all about those sorts of conflicted feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who she's gonna choose, man. Uh, that's a big question. They're going to have to compete on the baseball diamond. All right. So actually, actually uh, Tatsuya have won once now. What do you mean? Because he hit the well, home run off of Kazuya? Yeah. With, with a float, but, you know, he's yeah. still. I find that in a lot of Adachi series, like big characters experiencing success, a lot of the times it's like luck. Yeah. Or... Uh, it's just the way that things happen to play out. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, it's right. kind of whimsical that way. I remember that about mix too. Like there would, there would be characters would, like the ball would get hit straight to them. They wouldn't even move, and it would just land in their glove, and they'd be like, "Huh?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of scenes like that. Uh, you, you know, like energy always have like that sort of things where you know uh, a lot of looks are involved. Yeah. Oh, we we didn't talk about punch he, at all. Oh my god. Punch, punch, is... punch was so funny in these episodes. In episode 6 where he's like out in the city and he's got his paws up on the the glass at the cafe where yep, Minami yep, yep, and, yep, yep. and Kazuya or no, uh Kazuya and Kaori are having their date. Yep, yep, yep. No. No, no, it's, no, no. It's no, Kazuya that, and Minami. Uh, Kaori's and yeah, yeah, so that Kazuya and Minami and the other one is Tats, uh, Tatsuya and Kaoru. Right. And so he, he keeps barking and making all that noise. And the, the two brothers are trying to make sure that their dates don't see each other. Yeah. Uh, but then Punch, of course, spoils that whole thing. <laughs> and it, it's really funny to because obviously it's a human voicing him. All of his barks sound very human. But then <laughs> he makes like the little noise that he makes when he realizes that both couples have spotted each other. He's like, uh-oh. Like his, his his voice actor actually says like oh or something like that. It just made me laugh so much. Yeah, I I just I I just wonder you know, the voice actor if he have fun doing this. I I'm sure I, he did. You can that, hear it in yeah. his in his performance. That's right. He's yeah. often. I feel like Punch has often used um, the little. The little scenes that he has where he's trying to get the attention of the the poodle uh, who lives at yeah, the yeah. house across the street. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, or, or his frustration with not being fed on time or him, like, laughing at the misfortune of another character. He just, he seems to be a way that, like, Adachi speaks through 
punch his character in order to kind of uh, like poke fun at what's going on in the story or to yep. uh, comment on how a particular character is feeling by representing those feelings in punch's actions. Um, yep. Kind of kind of interesting to use use a an animal character that way rather than as simply a mascot or simply um, like a cute character or a bit of comic relief. He seems to have a function in the story. Yeah, I I I just I just like I just love the way that Adachi you know like sometimes building the expectation and then find a way to defy it. So like that that scene is one of of these uh example. So we got like uh Tatsuya and Kazuya trying their best to uh, to help them dead, not noticing the others, and then punch a spoiler. Yeah. And then we ha- we had the scene where uh, uh uh Kazuya and um uh, Minami talking about how Tatsuya just running before uh catching the ball in the baseball games. Right, and then and we get like the shot right afterward that he he completely mishandled, miss uh miss the uh the, the ball. Right, he does he mouse. does do exactly what Kazuya says. He runs to the location where he <laughs> thinks the ball will be immediately upon the yeah. bat connecting with the ball, but he just ends up yeah. going to the wrong spot at that one particular instance. Yep, yeah. and then it's really funny how Kazuya and Minami like just having had that talk, they they avert their eyes from each other like they're too ashamed of their <laughs> their acquaintance the fact that they're connected to this bozo so they have to yeah. not look at each other because they don't want to look each other in the eyes <laughs> yeah yeah that that is so great that that that's so great uh comedies are, uh about him you know his yep. writing is is so good i agree i also so, love the backgrounds uh yeah i love the backgrounds in this series i love that they're kind of washed out um, and if that if there is a a series that kind of stretches into the background, like yep. the the foreground will be very detailed, and the further it goes into the background, the less uh, paint will be used until eventually it fades yep. into like whiteness. So the background won't yep. be filled in at all. In the it in the case yep, yep, yep. of like let's say there is a forest, for example, in episode nine, the forest where um, uh, Harada and Tatsuya fight all those punks. Or mm-hmm. if there's a scene of like a street where if if the camera is at a particular point on the street and it's aiming down down the street so that it recedes into the background, um, yep. the further away that uh, you are from quote unquote the camera, the less the less detail there is, the more hazy yep. and and like less painterly it looks. It's really appealing and kind of kind of nostalgic. It's kind of like um, the whole show is being told from someone's memories. And like right. memories are kind of fuzzy at the corners, you know, they're not totally filled in or painted in. Yeah. So it, it gives it a, a definite uh, mood, I think. I think it's just a vintage, um, you know, like 80s, uh, 70s um, um, artistic for me. And I mean, I would, I would be su- gentle. I would be surprised if if a lot of other shows from the, because a lot of 80s anime are famous for their like hyper realistic movement and like really detailed. Oh, wow artwork right, um, right. think of your mm-hmm. like high budget 80s uh, really super violent ovas think of things like um mm-hmm. Ak- akira or yeah. um the the wings of honey amise the the gainax film yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i i think touch is probably alone or or doesn't have very many contemporaries i doubt there were many shows that use that particular technique of like uh, incorporating whiteness and like a lack of detail into particular parts of the frame. Hmm. Right. It's it's look cool though. I I, I really like the uh, the background that like, uh, like you said. Yeah, they're nice. I really I really like cell anime, man. <laughs> so, I you can you can tell when you're watching something that was shot on film, like that was actually photographed. Um, yeah. I mean, even in live action movies, you can tell when you're watching something that was uh, shot on film versus something that was uh, completely digital. There's yep, something yep, about yep. it. I think the human brain can recognize um, S- something like it. It looked more real, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can spot the imperfections. I think, or the quote unquote imperfections. I mean, I would, I would, I would argue that like modern like anime that's completely di- completely digital or film that is uh shot digitally um 
that that total um, like clean look, the lack mm-hmm. of blemishes is actually yep. viewed by our brain as an imperfection. So when it when it when our brain is seeing something that looks like way too clean, uh, it views that as like um, kind of an outlier. Like yeah, um, I I think they unreal. have a term for that. Something about eerie. Uh, something about you're talking about the uncanny valley. Yeah, yeah, un- uncanny valley. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, I I think that there's something to be said for, like, older anime shot on film, cells captured photographically. Um, something yeah. especially about the way that characters interact with the backgrounds, even if it is just like a you mm. know a flat cell placed on top of a of a painting or a watercolor background or what have you, and it's you know it's smoothed out and you take a picture of it, it's it really just creates a two dimensional image once it's been photographed and then those 2d images are spliced together on film but um the fact that something a a layered image has been captured um the cell was laying Mm -hmm. on top of the background i think that 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 layering that physicality um is is transferred to the final the final product yep in a way that we can pick up yep um, Which I do, like. That's right. Uh, do you have the uh, the uh, touch episode with you? I found the uh, the score that um, I mentioned before. Is it is it a violin? Are you uh, that goes do 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 do? Is it that one? All right. I I'm, I'm really bad with um <laughs> uh, with describing sound, so it, it's bad that you um sure I have it. Uh, I can I have on. all the episodes um, in front of me. I ha- all right. I have episode ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, in uh, six minute. At the, exactly the six minute mark. Yep. All right. Let me boot it up. Okay, I'm listening now. Oh, you're right, dude. Do 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 do. Do, do, yeah, 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 that one. Do, 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 do. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what right. kind of instrument that is. Uh, some sort of, some sort of woodwind instrument, I think, or it could be a flute. Yeah, actually. It, I, 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 I thought it was a flute, but it I think it is a flute. Really... Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so that actually that really does remind me of Aim for the Ace. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think it's the uh, insert songs, uh, especially the one that goes, "My girl." Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, that yeah. that is like super, super like '60s vocal pop. Um, so that's that's the first song that I think of when I think of Touch. But yeah, the one that you just played definitely sounds like him for the A's. Right. It has an, so, it has a, a like a wistful sound to it. It's a nice a nice song. Just got to get accustomed to it, I guess, because it's not very yeah, modern yeah, sounding. Yeah. Because uh, we're gonna watch it for like uh, another uh, ninety episodes, so I I better get accustomed to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I I think that might be the end of our postcard then. Yeah, I think so. It it run over like a hundred minutes already, and so what we're gonna doing in the next uh, postcard pooper? Well, we were talking earlier about like a, another double feature um, films, but we've done we've done several of those in in the recent months, so we will come around yeah. to those eventually. But I think what we're doing in two weeks is we are going to sample some anime from nineteen ninety seven. Right. Wow. Including That's gonna be uh, exciting. Utena, Berserk, and eight others <laughs> that are yep. not going to be not nearly as good. Most likely, <laughs> we won't know for sure until we watch them, though. So that's what we'll yeah, be talking true. about in a couple of weeks. Yep. Um, yeah, we're gonna discuss how how we go into approach uh business, business as well, because the first episode is a far cry from you know like the rest of the uh the series. Right. So, yeah, we're gonna have a talk on that. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I think what we'll end up doing is probably just watching the first episode and then conferring with each other and seeing whether we thought it was like representative of what's going to yeah. come later, whether it was good enough to stack up to some of the other stuff we watched or we'll, we'll figure out how to handle it. Yeah. All right. So see you in the next two weeks. See you then. <laughs>